Hi, I'm Bill Snodgrass, and this is episode 120. <clears throat> By request, in this video, I'm going to do a uh, what's in my bag video. I'm going to talk about three situations uh, and what's in my bag. First, I'm going to talk about sports. Second, I'm going to talk about uh, what I do when I'm going out to shoot video, like now. And third, what do I do when I'm going to do a portrait or a group photos or a portrait shoot or something like that. Let's move on to talk about um, portrait work. So for portrait work, um, I feel like my experiences are, are the, I have the most experience with the portrait work of all these things I've talked about. And, and so I feel a little more, uh, a little more uh, confident in, in what I'm about to, to share. Uh, it works for me. And everyone's gonna have, have different, uh, different ideas and opinions about things. But uh, one thing they'll probably all agree on is, is you don't need an iPhone gimbal to go do portrait work. So that comes out of the bag. So does the cables and things that go with it. And then into the bag goes my speed lights. So I put the speed lights in the bag. And if you have speed lights, you have to have batteries. So they go in the bag. So uh, the microphone comes out, the gimbal comes out. Um, and there you have it, and I'm ready to go do portrait work. I'll leave the lenses in. I'm probably never going to use this lens on a portrait shoot, and I'm almost certainly never going to use this lens on a portrait shoot. What I am going to do, though, I'm just leaving the bag, so I, I it just, I, sometimes I, I guess if I wanted to lighten the load, I could take them out, but I'll leave them in. I start to shoot off with this 18-135. This is an EF and it has a 3.5 uh, aperture on it. It goes down to 3.5. It goes down to a 3.5 aperture. Also have the, the lens tool. Um, so I, I start every shoot, almost every shoot, I start with, with this lens. Um, obviously for ISO on a portrait shoot, you don't need to, to run it way up. You want nice, clean, smooth pictures and the person's not gonna be moving around too much. Um, I do probably, uh, I, wanna, I wanna keep my shutter speed around 200. I wanna make sure I'm focusing well. I'll make sure that I'm holding the camera steady. I don't want any blurry pictures. I've had some, some fantastic poses over the years, over the dozens of years I've been doing this, where there was just some flaw in the focus or, or maybe a twitch at the last second. So uh, I wanna make sure that all those things are compensated for in the camera settings. So. So start with this lens, why? Because it zooms. And you can get those close compositions at the moment without shoving the camera closer than the model, especially if you're shooting amateurs who aren't professional models. Um, I'll ease them in. Um, also the wide angle aspect, the, the, the 28 converts to about, converts to about, uh, about 40, roughly 40 when you do the 1.6 conversion. So 40 is, is a, is a it's a good focal length, and then the the 135 converts to around 200 on the the, the, the 1.6 there as well. So um, it, it gives you a good range of focal lengths that you can work with. I was doing some uh, family photos the other day, and I had to abandon the 50 millimeter lens altogether and, and go to the and go to the other, go to the, the go to the 28, so that I could get the whole family in the picture. But usually, somewhere early in the in the session, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch lenses. I'm gonna go into that uh, 1.4. Now I feel like the the 1.4 aperture on the 50 millimeter is that significant. Being able to go down to two or 2.8 or 2.5, and I've gone down lower before. But you know, being able to to crank the aperture to get that depth of field down creates that that very very nice blurred portrait quality background and and I, I just feel like I would be short changing my, my clients um, if I didn't have the ability to, to shoot those kind of pictures now not everybody wants that but but it is a very desirable look um, and so so I have that so th this is going to be the main setup for lenses and body uh, 100 or 200, maybe 400 ISO, um, 800 and some, like I do some night street shot stuff, but I try to keep the ISO as low as possible for portraits and still keep that shutter speed, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a good place. Now, a faster shutter speed for a portrait, I, I've, I've not thought of any reasons not to shoot a portrait at 500th of a second. 
unless you're trying to get the background to be blurred and motion blur as well but that's that's a, 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 a whole that's a whole video in and of itself the speed lights I have are uh, they're not new they're the 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 ex twos I have the the 430 and the 580 now what these what is really cool about them is that uh, they will work as slaves and many of the EOS bodies you can you can pop up this flash and it will slave these things now the the, the new uh, the new speed the new speed lights have a radio function and the new bodies have the radio function but uh, for me the old flashes uh, I have to get the I have to use the, the the photo slave method and it works really well extra batteries these guys will drain batteries and you get in the middle of a of a shoot and you don't have the batteries you're going to the car uh, i always have extra batteries in here but when i'm doing a portrait shoot i get an extra set of extra batteries another thing that that i, I do for portrait shoots that's a, a sunscreen for the windshield but also also works i wish i hadn't thrown it away it also works as a as a light reflector um, did a video on that this is a cold shoe it'll mount so I, I use the the light pole put the speed light on it and I can have two off-body flashes and, and and I am so sold on the concept of off-body flashes that um, I've invested in this in this equipment and and I've made it a, a practice Pretty much every time I'm going out to shoot, to shoot portraits, I'm taking the speed lights, I'm taking the poles. Whether I take one pole or two is the question, but I'm, I'm definitely gonna put, I'm gonna put one of the speed lights three or four feet off to the side and, and have it having the light come in from a different direction. I can f use it as a fill flash to counter bright sunlight. I can use it as a primary light. If I have the model in the shade, I can, I can there's just so many things you can do with you with off body flash. And I've, I, did, uh, I did a little video uh, showing how to do one speed light as an off-body flash, um, but I, I, I do two. The other, the other piece of equipment, the other piece of equipment that I sometimes use is this. I will put the camera here, put one of the flashes here, and for an event, event photography, if you're inside, you can bounce it off the wall, bounce it off the ceiling, but you've got a, a nice extra piece of gap. And then if you go into a vertical format, it flips around and it brings everything lines up the way it's supposed to. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool little thing. I got this in Memphis from uh, Memphis Photo Supply. I don't know if they're still in business. And I don't remember. I was in Memphis not too long ago, and I don't remember if they were still there or not. But um, this is called a CB Digital T is what it's called. But I've had this for, I don't know, 10 years, at least 10 years. Um, that's a, a kind of a special case um, where, where I would do that. I have at times put the, put the 580 on the camera body and used the 430 as the slave. That's another way. Um, I probably should do a whole video on speed light off body flash techniques. What else is in the camera bag? That I haven't already shown you. Um, batteries for the camera. Uh, I always have this guy when I go out. This is a, a charger for two of my batteries. Two of my batteries charge off of this. Um, and this plugs into any USB charger, like your phone charger. Uh, it's a micro USB port. So, you know, this and then just a regular USB port on the other side. It's just a micro USB and a regular USB on the other side. So that's always in here. Um, in this section here, um, I do have this guy. This is necessary if you're using him, so the connects the flash to the. Uh, so I always keep this in here. Um, I have the USB card reader. I mean, yeah, the the SD card reader, and is so funky shaped that sometimes if you put the card in and try to plug this in. So I got this little tiny USB extender, which gives enough clearance. Sometimes you can get around the odd configuration. Lastly, um, the outside pouch.
this is less photography stuff. I don't know, it's, it is some photography stuff, and then it's a lot of other stuff. So I got a lightning cable. I got the, the charging cable for the GoPro, which is a, a mini USB. I got the charging cable for the battery thing, which is micro USB. It also charges my extra battery for the phone. This is like the, this is a, my own, my charge, you know, the extra. So this charges this and then this, yeah, phone. Um, I have this old tabletop uh, tripod. I haven't used it in a while, but it's still uh, in the bag and it's helpful. Um, cough drops, got this little thing from, from uh, Joby. So a little tabletop iPhone holder. I've used it a few times. Uh, got this big pipe clamp thing. Uh, I've actually clamped the DSLRs onto pipes with this. And yeah, so just things like that. I got these, these extra clip-on lenses for the iPhone. I got this set of clip-on lenses for the iPhone. Um, I got an iPhone 8 now, so I got the lightning to headphone jack thing. I got that. Uh, I have a makeup mirror, which I, I can use to look behind the, if I'm using the back facing lens. Um, when I had the iPhone success, I did that a lot more frequently. And then, uh, yeah, lens cloths and that sort of stuff. S lastly, last thing, I never know, I always, this has happened once or twice in my, in my career as a photographer, um, I'm out doing pictures of flowers and something happens and I need a release. So I, I, always, I always have model releases. I always have at least one blank model release in case, you know, you just never know when some famous model is going to want you to shoot their portrait on the spot, you know, just out of the blue. You got to be prepared. Got to be prepared for that. Naturally, there's a pin that goes with that. It's There's a pin in here, there's a pin in here, and there's a pin in there. That is what is in my camera bag. I think I might have I might have gotten most of everything. There's uh, other stuff in the car. Um, this is my this is all my pieces and uh, to attach the GoPro to things. I usually don't carry this around with me, but I just I brought it for, for this video. And this is uh, another bag. Um, this is a I use this with a rubber band on the speed lights as a diffuser and. Uh, Okay, enough. This is, I have no idea. This is probably like a half hour video. So, time to get out of here. Time to wrap this up. Um, so the guy, uh, you know who you are. You asked for this. Hope this was helpful. Come around my classroom next year, and uh, I'll show you anything that you have more interest in seeing. I am awesome. It's awesome that you asked, and I, I'll you know just anything you want to know. Let me let me know. Anybody who's watching, comment down. What do you have in your bag? What should I have in mine that you that that, that I that I left out? I may have it and just forgot to mention it. But what do you what what is missing from my camera bag? Um, likes, comments, share this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe to the channel, and see you in the next episode. I asked for, ask for things in the car. Um, I've, I've also got this this uh, stabilizer, and, and it's I'm a contortionist now. I got this stabilizer. It's really good for like when you're when you're trying to do pans and those kinds of things. But about half the time these days, um, I just use I just use the Joby. Um, I just use the, the Gorilla Pod, and it, it accomplishes very similar. It has a very similar feel. You have to, you know a little different ergonomics, but it'll accomplish the same thing. I can brace it against my chest and do a torso pan. So anyway, but I also have this. It's usually in the car. So. There's a lot of stuff that's usually in the car. Yeah. Also. Also in the camera bag is contact lens solution. Contact lens solution. Contacts and cough drops. I might have mentioned that, cough drops. 
the the uh, epilogue is going to be longer than the video. I also have these, you know, uh, reflector things. I got two of these, and for portrait shoots, a lot of times I'll have one of these uh, and use this, uh, and, and it just depends. And I got these at the car store. I made another video about it. These are little, you know, reflectors that keep your car from getting hot. Uh, they also would work for photography. And they're very readily available and not very expensive. You get two, two in one pack for like eight bucks. Not photography equipment, but it's in the car. Last thing, last thing. This is a little field recorder. Um, I've used it a couple times, like when I was doing video, obviously not for photography. But like, um, I would be like walking across the field when the camera was on me. Actually, it was, I might have been, in, I know one time I was walking down the hallway talking about distance and displacement. I used the field recorder to record my voice so that it would be, you know, field recorder. All the stuff is linked. This is the tripod I was using. A little clippy thing. All right, that, that this is gonna be the end of the epilogue. So, if you're still watching, all that stuff about likes and shares, do that. See you in the next episode. Really, this time.